Have you ever gone on social media and saw your favorite celebrity posting about their luxurious life and it made you wonder if you're ever going to achieve it and then you felt bad? Or someone from your circle had some success and you didn't think that they deserved it or that you should have got that success? Well, I have good news and bad news for you. The bad news is that you are holding yourself back and poisoning your life with this negativity by constantly comparing yourself to other people. But the good news is that we are going to cut it out today. Here's the outline of today's video and I hope you are going to enjoy it. It's going to be filled with really valuable, actionable advice that you can start doing right now and you're going to feel so much better after you cleanse yourself from this don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into it let's start by defining and understanding what is comparison and why we really do it because truly i think every single person without wanting to or meaning to they're comparing themselves to other people and it's just human nature we all do it i have my computer here so let me read out for you what the psychology logical definition is for comparing yourself to others. Comparing oneself to others is a process of evaluating one's own characteristics and abilities in relation to those of others. It's quite self-explanatory and straightforward, however, it is very important that you need to see that, yeah, there are two parties. There's me and there's another person. I'm comparing myself to for a reason, so let's break it down why. There are different types of comparisons, which is crazy because I never really broke down how I'm comparing myself to others. Whenever I was comparing myself to others, I never really thought through why or how I'm comparing myself to others. It's just like, they're better than me. No, actually, I never said that. <laughs> there are different ways of comparison. There's four different ways that you can compare yourself to others and let's list them all here by direction by focus by motivation and then we have some additional ones so let me break it down by direction we have downwards upwards and lateral comparison these are very very easy to do if you're thinking about someone like upwards and downwards if you're thinking about who has less you're comparing yourself to someone who's under you you're you're you want to make yourself feel better that's what you do when when you're comparing yourself <laughs> to someone who's like you think that they are under you right then we have the upward one when you really are going to make yourself feel worse and you're doing this for many reasons which i'm going to be talking about later but we do this when we are scrolling on instagram and we see all these celebrities and all our friends who are having an amazing life and they all post about the amazing things that they are doing and then you can also compare yourself to others by focus meaning you are comparing yourself to others by their social status their physical appearance and their achievements the social comparison can be they're more popular they're more like they have different skills that make them accepted by other people in a social setting and you don't have that or by physical appearance that's super easy because everybody now is comparing themselves by their appearance we really need to change this so let's let's break this down because it's really harmful every single person looks differently so i really don't see the point of this however everybody does it i do it it's very very damaging because if you're thinking about other people that you look better from that makes you feel better and you you feel like oh i feel so much better that i look better than a and b however that means you need that satisfaction you need that assurance that you look better than someone else to feel good which is really not good if you're thinking about it and if you're comparing yourself to another person that oh she looks much better than me or he looks much better than me then you're making it worse for yourself and making your self-esteem and your confidence just break down and then by achievement i really lived through this when i was in high school i really really lived through this it wasn't me i didn't do it actively it wasn't something that i i thought to myself and i was comparing myself to others and their achievement but i remember there was one specific girl who was literally dying to know my results know my achievements, know what I did in school, what marks I got, every single thing. It wasn't even subtle ever. It was always like, what was your mark? 
what was this? This is what I did. And she was like showing me into my face. I never asked because I didn't care. <laughs> But she was shoving it into my face, literally, so I can see it. And I couldn't help it. After a time, I never really told her what I did, how much I got, what marks I got, what I was really doing in school. But deep down, that was my motivation. That was my push whenever I needed it. And we can think about it as a good and bad thing because I did both. Like, I was performing better because I had this, like, extra push. However, many times I think it shouldn't have been there because it's really damaging when you're thinking about, like, oh, I'm going to get this result because this other person's going to ask me or this other person's going to outperform me. Who cares? We live different life. Nobody cares about your mark. I think achievement wise, everybody suffers from every single period of life in school, when you go to university, when you get out of uni, then it's more like, not necessarily career wise, people are going to ask you what you do. However, the most compared thing in your 20s, I think is going to be your personal life. If you have a boyfriend, if you're engaged, if you are going to get married, if you have kids, if you're buying a house, it's very much about like that home and that, that family aspect that people are going to compare you to like, oh, by the way, A and B just got married. When are you going to get married? It's pointless. We all live different lives. Then we have motivational and then we have three groups, which are informational, competitive, and self-evaluative comparison. Informational comparison is really just like using a person to learn and get inspired they are going to be your source of information i'm not sure a lot of people do that however i think that competitive comparison is going to resonate with most of us i think this is going to be something that you cannot even avoid unfortunately this is how society has been built up you're going to be constantly be put in situations where you're going to have to compete with other people even if you didn't want to just think about the p classes or all the other sport competitions that you had to attend and you have to compete with others and then in university competing with other people for the same mark or better marks or whatever it was and then also in the work life when you're an adult and you have to get a job because why not you're going to be competing with other people because you are put in situations like that you're competing from the get-go when you're trying to get hired you're already competing with people to get hired the competition already started from the door when you even you're not even in the building okay it's built in us it's we we are raised like that every single person is even if your parents didn't raise you like that society will the self-evaluative one is a very tricky one and very interesting because i think that people who do their own self-growth their self-love journey they get to a point when they start looking around if other people have done the same thing and that's when you start comparing yourself to others and it can be in a negative and positive way as well most of us i think when we are comparing ourselves to someone who's better we get inspired but when you're looking to others who hasn't done or haven't done that kind of work you get frustrated not necessarily compare yourself and you feel better i personally feel really angry and frustrated that why haven't they done that work because i know how much better they would have been or how much better they would feel if they would do that work and i take that on myself and i get frustrated and it really is not my business so it's really damaging to me so i really have to stop that then we've got the additional ones where which are realistic and unrealistic and explicit and implicit. And I think here I'm just going to talk about the first one because I think most of us resonate with that. And I have to start with, I don't think that there is such thing as realistic comparison. I think every single person live different lives. Everybody has a different story, different experiences. We cannot say that me and you are the same. Always going to be unrealistic in my eyes. There is no such thing as realistic comparison. Now we can understand that there are so many different types and directions and ways to compare ourselves to others and we also know that it's probably not a good thing but I'm going to be talking about this a bit further just later on however let's talk about why we actually do it or how it started why is it there because let me tell you before we had schools before we had to go into work and and into university into school we already had this we already compared ourselves to others for many different reasons one of the reasons why we did that was to survive because we had to understand that 
if I'm weaker and I see another person who's bigger or probably stronger than me, I had to compare our abilities and I had to stop myself from being the Lulu and run away. I had to do that. You needed to compare yourself to other people's potentials. So that route started from there and then we obviously emphasized on it and made it. 10 times worse then we obviously have the social needs and the belonging aspect the self-evaluation and identity formation aspect we learned this before but also the learning and information gathering aspect which we saw that we do have that and there is a way to compare yourself to others to get information from them and then lastly we have the competitive comparison and the goal setting i do think that this is the most used this is the most popular at the moment everybody's competing with each other and many people are like oh that person looks that great so i'm setting my goal to look that great too it works hand in hand honestly not only society is the one who's pushing this narrative but right now in the past couple of years probably has been social media even though i work in social media even though i love marketing and i love social media so much and i think it's such a powerful tool many people are using it in the wrong way or there's no intention behind it if you're working out and if you look great yes definitely you feel great so you want to post that and you're proud of that however obviously other people are going to think that they haven't achieved that yet and they're going to compare themselves to you and feel bad about themselves that's none of your business but this is what it creates right it's completely natural it's completely fair right on both sides you're going to feel good you post it you're proud you're going to compare yourself to that great look if you haven't achieved it or even if you have but you're going to compare yourself to others and you're going to feel bad so i just think that social media is a great tool but it's very powerful and there are so many different things that you can do and stop social media from affecting you to compare yourself to others and constantly put yourself down because all of you probably have gone on your phone already today and it's something that everybody does on a daily basis so constantly putting yourself down every single day is going to be very harmful so listen out because later on i'm going to give you a couple of ideas how to stop yourself from constantly experiencing this negative feeling before i'm going to go into how we are going to get rid of all this comparison and all this negativity i really want to dive into the negative impacts that it will create it definitely has some positive impacts as well however the negative is always going to outweigh the the positives and the negatives are always going to be more talked about and the positives are positive so we don't have to discuss that and solve it i really want to focus on the negatives how you're feeling if you're constantly comparing yourself to others i broke it down into two different groups one is emotional and one is motivational group and then we have some overall as well at the end the emotional impact is something that i think many of us genuinely do struggle from but none of us really speak about because we don't think that that's the reason however this really impacts your self-esteem it's going to increase anxiety increase depression or make you depressed even though you weren't before it's going to make you envious and jealous of other people at the end and this constant comparison and this constant jealousy this constant negative feeling is going to increase in you you're genuinely going to be obsessively comparing yourself to others and so involved in that world of i'm not better i'm not doing that that person is so much better than me and have all those negative thoughts that your self-worth your self-esteem and your confidence all are going to decrease constantly on a daily basis and it will end up being an illness and it will end up being anxiety and it will end up being depression which you can avoid you can genuinely step back and just be like hold on i'm comparing myself to others i know if i'm going to play this game i could potentially end up being anxious end up being depressed end up being that person who feels worthless and feel like i'm no better than others i'm i'm i don't deserve anything I'm not good, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't deserve good things in life. You don't want to get to that point. And then motivational impact. I love this part because this is a trick that you can stop yourself from doing and be motivated and actually achieve things. Because when you're comparing yourself to others 
and it has a motivational impact it can genuinely demotivate you from doing things or you get so obsessive and so entangled into this comparison game that you will have paralysis motivational paralysis when you're just so involved into all those good things that the other person has and you don't have that you struggle to make the decisions and you end up not doing anything and you won't achieve those great things and that your great potential you will stop yourself from achieving all those things because you're comparing yourself so much to the other person and obviously it can also lead to procrastination or the tendency of perfectionism when you're so obsessed with doing everything right and if it's not right you don't do it that's when the procrastination comes into play you should not be thinking like that it's very damaging it's going to keep you away from your potential and you are going to be stationary in that situation with all those thoughts and all those overwhelming feelings and just watching how other people are going to achieve their great potential and that the feeling is just going to increase and then lastly we have the overall impact and here I just want to mention how it can impact you as a person that it changes where you're going to get your validations from if you're in a healthy situation a healthy mental space and you don't compare yourself to others you're completely like you're confident you feel good in your body you don't need that external validation to feel good you don't need that you don't need to post on social media to get that validation the same example that I mentioned earlier if you are in the game and you compare yourself to others and you make yourself feel bad you achieve that thing you're going to post something because you need that validation like i did all this and there's no way that nobody's going to say something about it so i have to post you don't need that external validation is something that is really damaging and i see a lot of girls that they dress a certain way they behave a certain way they look a certain way many of them because that's what their society that's what their circle does and it's very sad because truly one of our best thing that god gave us was to be unique and be different and there's no person who's like you and i hate seeing people trying to fit in trying to look the same way how, how other people look and i'm not saying these things like i haven't done them i have i have However, I really put in this work and I got to a place that I don't care anymore. And I also want to mention that even though comparison is, has a lot of negative things and negative impacts on your life, it's very crucial and it's something that we brought from way, way back and it's crucial to our life to be able to identify threats, to be able to identify opportunities so use it as a tool to improve your life rather than destroy it and now the best and the most weighted thing is breaking the cycle down we have to start by identifying the comparison pattern okay what is the thing that triggers you what is that thing is it a person is it a word is it a place is it a thing what is it you have to be focused on every single thing that you're doing when you see yourself or you catch yourself comparing yourself to others be there what was it what was that triggered me what was that sentence what was that place what was that person that triggered me write it down keep a note and keep track of what triggers you then you have to identify what you feel feel the emotion and write it down is it that you feel anxious is it that you feel frustrated how i was before is it that you are jealous or envious of other people write that down as well it's going to help you identify and see those points when you are triggered and what are the emotions that you're feeling what are those things that come up immediately third please notice your self-talk when you look at yourself in the mirror or when you just thinking about yourself what is the things that you are saying about yourself what are the things that you're saying to yourself are you constantly saying negative things to yourself because that will constantly just bring you down you don't notice it in the, in the moment when i when you say it to yourself i look so bad today you don't really feel anything different but that throughout your day is going to constantly just bring you down because you feel that about yourself deep down and it's going to constantly just it will show on you people are going to notice that about you that you think that you are not really it then also i want you to be very very mindful of things that could trigger you and there are three things three main groups that are very commonly mentioned that can trigger one of them we mentioned social media really be aware of the people that are going to try trigger you unfollow them do the things that you need to 
on social media it's not your life social media is not your life that is a platform you can unfollow your friends if they trigger you on social media do it nobody cares nobody cares and if they do that's their problem and that's their life but it's not yours and if it's triggering you to keep you healthy and sane and keep you away from comparison do it secondly competitive environments are also very triggering so for some people so you should avoid that as well or just limit it as much as you can and then also personal milestones if somebody tells you that they achieved something and you constantly get triggered that is something that you have to work on because you really need to be especially for your friends you need to be happy for other people achieving things and being happy in life you can use that as a motivation to better your life as well and not as a comparison a negative thing that they achieved something great and i haven't yet you need to think about these triggers you need to avoid these situations until you get to a place that you can comfortably be in situations like this and handle them well once you identified what are your triggers and you're mindful of these triggers then you can create a coping mechanism you need to challenge these negative thoughts that you might have whenever you have a negative self thought or whenever somebody triggers you and you start feeling some kind of way and you might think to yourself that you, you're not worthy or you're not happy, you're, you're not as happy as you thought you would be you need to challenge these things and you need to start practicing gratitude you need to be thankful for the things that are happening to you because I promise you the goals that you set for yourself when you are younger you're probably are living in one of them at least and you need to be grateful for that because it really just shows that whatever you put your mind to it happens so you need to shift that perspective from oh my god look at where I am right now to oh my god look at where I am right now like I achieved the things I wanted to achieve and you should start celebrating the things that you achieve this is your journey your goals your life and there are so many things that you achieved that, that other people didn't and there are so many things that other people achieved and you didn't but that doesn't matter because this is you and what you desire you need to work for and you will achieve and nobody is going to stand in your way what's meant for you will find you and that is such a good advice because I've heard this over and over again the past couple of years and it's so true once you let go of all these negative feelings all these weird thoughts that this is what I'm supposed to be doing this is where I'm supposed to be this is what I'm missing out on however truly if you let go of these things and you sit back and stop it and you start observing and you start letting things happen to you opportunities that are meant for you will not miss you I promise you that and if you're in a situation that you think that you need support get support get that help because if you can you should be if you need that therapist if you need that medication if you need those kind of tools to feel better or need that help get it or you can go on YouTube and watch videos like these watch self-help videos on YouTube or read self-help books just try to do different kind of activities like journaling reading really meditating just doing things that will bring you back to earth and be more mindful and I promise you it will help you so much and please don't be hard on yourself this is a process to heal yourself okay identifying your triggers also takes a long time and also creating that coping mechanism is a long process as well and healing from it is a long process so be very very patient with yourself there are so many triggers that you might be triggered from and you need to find all of them you need to learn about yourself and find as many as you can so you know what are the things that will trigger you and then you can create some kind of coping mechanism for yourself that will work and make you feel better and protect you from falling into the same pattern falling into the same mistakes and feeling bad again and when you catch yourself of thinking that other people are better than you or that you are behind things or that some people are behind their potential bring facts in because i think that's the only reason why people are so quick to judge and quick to jump into this fault of comparing themselves to others and actually believing it because if you think about it if you go on social media people are going to post all the good things they will not post something that's sad or they're struggling with if they are truly struggling with sometimes people nowadays do post about it so they can motivate other people and kind of seem real but the daily struggles that they are really really struggling with you won't see and nobody's going to see it and i'm telling you now that 
every single person feels the same way how you do every single person has daily struggles and once you bring in facts you will realize how little you know about the people and that will help you be like well that's great about their life but i don't really know what else is great or what else is bad and the only thing that you actually truly know is you is your life and that's the only thing that you can also control so really doesn't matter and once you have these facts you can ask yourself is this something that is realistic is it is is there a point for me to compare myself to another person not really probably so try to challenge these thoughts try to challenge these feelings constantly when you are triggered and you feel that you are comparing yourself to another person and then you are put down by it finally we got to the actionable strategies part and i want you to take a pen and paper and write these down i want you to work on this now so we need to shift your focus from other people to your own life we are shifting that mindset from focusing on other people's lives and what great life they have to your own life it's all about you your life is about you okay so step number one is identifying your values take time to reflect on what are those things that you swear by and what are your core values and what are the things that you live by so ask yourself what do i stand for what principles guide my life and the actionable step here is to set aside 15 minutes this week to write down five of your core values second set personal goals aligned with your core values use these identified core values that you just set your for yourself for listing your goals ask yourself how can i live my values in everyday life well goals can bring me closer to them and make sure that your goals are smart specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound and the actionable step here is to get one of your values and set a smart goal for it for the next month and then you can actually bring it to action the third is to track your own achievements and not others and here the actionable step is to sit down every month or every week i personally do it every week i do like a reflection session and write down three things that you achieved that it was great that you're thankful for that happened these can be really smart things as well just something that you are proud of that you're happy that you think it was an improvement in your life number four is to limit your social media this is really hard especially because so many people work in social media and work in marketing so it's like part of their job however your personal time on social media should be limited completely limited you can also limit it by time you can set yourself 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening just for social media however you should curate it so your actionable step for this one is to go on your little profile and unfollow all those people that you think trigger you or if you don't remember which one triggers you or you don't feel that oh this person doesn't trigger me when you're scrolling on instagram you come across a post that triggers you unfollow that person you can even block that person or you can just show, you can press on one of those buttons and say that you're not interested in their content. Please do this because that way you will filter what kind of content you're going to be consuming and limit all the negative feelings. Number five is practicing gratitude. Love this one. I have a gratitude journal as well and I love it. I know that many of us are suffering from the cost of living crisis. So don't think that you have to go on Amazon or wherever and buy these 30 pounds journals for the sole purpose of this you can literally just get a book get a notebook a cheap one whichever it is or a piece of paper it doesn't even matter and just write down every day or as often as you wish my advice is an everyday gratitude journal where you talk about the improvements talk about the achievements talk about the things that you are grateful for in your own life that you created for yourself or other people made you feel good about yourself this way you can identify the people that don't trigger you this way you can also track what are the things that you do to yourself or for yourself that make your life better also you're slowly going to shift from that perspective of looking at others life focusing on others lives and just tracking their success to focusing on yourself and see what are the things that you do to yourself what are the things that you do for yourself and what are the things that you're accomplishing and and all the great things in your life 
rather than others number six is practicing mindfulness i very much recommend meditations or yoga or pilates these are activities that are going to elevate your soul and not keep you in this conscious state of mind but kind of elevate your soul elevate your mind and kind of let go of all these stressful components in your life so the actionable step here is to set aside five minutes every single night where you're going to be meditating focusing on your breath doing some breath work and letting go of all the negative things that kind of piled up during the day number seven is to surround yourself with supportive people i cannot stress how important this is whoever does not serve your life does not help you does not support you does not bring you joy to your life cut them out right now block delete you can delete people from your life as well you are allowed to do that so the actionable step here is to focus on all those people who bring you joy spend time with them reach out to them tell them that you want to hang out with them and tell them that you want to get closer to them because it will help you enormously number eight is to celebrate other success and achievements without diminishing yours you should be happy for people who are happy for you as well you need to be happy for people that are achieving goals that are working hard for their goals and achievements and they get that success at the end so your actionable step here is that next time when somebody reaches out to you or you find out that someone has great news or achieved something in their life instead of going back to that pattern of oh my god i'm not there you are going to send them a message if you're meeting them in person you are going to show them your appreciation and your support and your admiration for what they achieved in their lives and not focus on what you feel not focus on your life because what they achieved won't affect your life set those two things apart number nine is seeking professional support this is something I kind of mentioned before that you can go to a therapist if you want to or if you can afford it. I totally support that. So your actionable step is if you wish to do this, set time apart to research and find a good therapist and set time apart on a monthly basis, a two weekly basis to go and take care of yourself. Finally, number 10 is to create an abundance mindset. Stop limiting yourself because we have so so much time and so much space and so many opportunities so stop limiting yourself with other people's lives and other people's beliefs and what you should be doing and what you should have achieved it doesn't matter you can achieve whatever you want you can achieve anything you want the actionable step here is to set aside five minutes every day before your meditation where you sit down in a calm and comfortable position and you're going to say out loud those things that you wish for without limiting yourself you can literally reach for the stars nobody cares nobody's going to hear you just focus on whatever you are aiming for if you don't want to say it out loud because you live with other people you can also write these down or you can just think about it in your head before your meditation thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something drop a comment down below and tell me which actionable step you're going to take this week and i will see you next week bye